Thanks for joining us back on Full On Football. And as I said, joining us for the State League segment, we've got Alex Alexandru, uh, Vice President of West Adelaide, is that correct? Uh, Vice President, Vice Chairman of the... Vice Chairman. And also Amongst other things, President Matt. of the Juniors, aren't President you? President of the Juniors, Yeah, fantastic. Groundsman. Of course, I'd like to introduce cool. Alex. <laughs> Alex Alexandru, you've been with us before. I couple, have. Almost, I think, every year you've been on the show. Um... I guess I've got to ask you the same question. Now, you, you've got a really unique insight to Martin because not only did you watch him as a player with Hellas in the 1978 championship winning yep. team, you've also been involved with him with coaching with your own son at yep. Sassy as a parent and, of course, uh, trying to get advice from him as a coach. So what, what, is, what sort of a, a mark has Martin left on you as a person? Look, um, I mean, firstly, as a parent, um, I mean, the opportunity that Michael received in going into SASE. Um, I know all the clubs try so hard in junior development. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't got the funding or the resources to match what SASE does. Mm. Um, and really, Martin Crook put this program together from day one. Mm. Um, he's the one that lobbied for funding, I'm sure with others as well. But he was a driving light behind it. And I know Michael Peroni went through some of the quality kids that have come through it. Mm. And the thing is, look, not everyone's going to be a, a professional footballer out of it. But I know the kids learn discipline. Uh, they learn to respect. Um, respect themselves, respect their opposition. And these are all things that, that Martin was really strong on. Uh, mm. And that, uh, as far as myself, when I was growing up, uh, when Martin was playing, I, I was 11, 12, 13 years old. And I'd rock up to Highmarsh with my dad. And I'd see the curly locks mm. under the cap. Yes. And I'd think, uh, lucky Martin's playing today because uh, we had to bleed period uh, after 78. And I mean, the guy was just a, a sensational goalkeeper. Uh, the fact that he played for Australia, um, I mean, that just in itself shows the quality of the, of the man as a player. Mm. And, and that's where my memories are of mm. Martin. And like I said, he was a, a childhood um, hero of mine. Mm. And then when my son went into Sassy, it just uh, like completed a, a full circle, shall we say. It's, it's wonderful so. to be able to, <clears throat> all my, to have your heroes touchable, isn't it? It's just like amazing. And he was such a good person that would be able to talk to anyone, give anyone advice and, and yeah. just talk no, to no, everyone look, as an equal. Yeah, absolutely. Sadly missed. Um, but the thing is, I mean, his legacy lives on, mm. right? And, and that's important, uh, especially for, for us at West Adelaide. But... Everyone he touched at Parry Hills and, and Sassy, and, and you know, and all the other clubs too. Yeah. You know, you never heard a, a bad word spoken about no. uh, Martin, and um, that's a credit to himself and, and his family. Definitely. Well, of course, your uh, West Adelaide's involved in the state league, so let's have a look at uh, the walloping that you gave Gawler over the weekend. Round four results of the state league. Hoo hoo, look at that top result, 7-1. Uh, with Markovic, good to see him on the board again because he's been a bit lean lately uh, uh, with a double. Yes. And Calagerius with a double. And uh, Kezios and Giamarelos Giamma, as well. And an own goal uh, just knocked in there for... Uh, um, good measure. Good measure, definitely. And uh, Rochelle scoring for Gawler. Norlunga 3, NAB 4, with uh, still a McLean uh, scoring for Norlunga, and Balekas for NAB, a double, a Seti and Frasina, a uh, great goal there for NAB. Uh, Port Piri, Enfield went up to Port Piri for the trip, and they came away winners with the one goal, uh, lone goal there by Peter Wayne, who was our guest last week. So you see, full on football is very good for players here. And uh, then we had Western District Toros 1, Northern Demons 2. A metropolis um, scoring and Gian Caspro and Motley and very unfortunate for Northern Demons because we had one of their players uh, breaking his ankle in that match. The first half went for something like just over an hour while the ambulance came so we do wish uh, th that player all the best. And then of course we had the Cove 2, Playford 5, so the Cove going down for their first loss of the season with Hughes and Coney scoring for Cove and Nichols scoring a brace, Crawford Reeves and Allen scoring for Playford. Very, very big result there for you guys, the 7-1. Um, look, uh, it was a good result for us. Um, we'd uh, lost two of our first three, mm -hmm. which uh, I suppose starts putting pressure on everyone, mm -hmm. but uh, a win is, uh, is like uh, gold. But, um, I mean, you look at the other games, 
and uh, you know NAB just got over uh, Nolunga. Mm. Some huge raps on this uh, youngster at NAB. Uh, Balekas, mm -hmm. uh, ex-Bluegal yes. player, I believe. Yes, there is so, a lot of talk about the town yes, about him. so maybe we need to um, <laughs> have, have a look at him, maybe get some videos off you. Uh, yeah, I might Matt. have to do and that. And I heard, look, I heard the Piri, uh, Enfield game, Piri played very well up there, yep. and only one goal in it. Yep. And Toros, you know, I mean, George yep. Metropolis, yep. featuring the best players and scoring, and, you know, they only went down to, uh, by goal to Demons. Look, it's a very competitive league. Um, I mean, the quality... Every year is getting better in the state league. Mm. Um, whereas a couple of years ago, I know you had Nolunga and uh, and Comets just uh, waltz through it, mm. uh, and uh, Strikers and, and Cobras. But I think the league's a lot stronger and a lot uh, a lot more competitive, which is, which is fantastic. So it is fantastic, and uh, you're talking about being very tight. Let's have a look at that ladder after round four because it is uh, very very tight, and you know one two wins can make a huge difference here. You've got Seaford out on top. Would you believe Seaford? Oh, I would have because my second favourite coach <laughs> is Ben Dale. Oh, Ben Dale. He's going to yeah. love hearing that because you guys are up against yeah, no, him. Got, We're going to have a yeah, look at no, that. I've got a lot of time for Ben. I yeah. mean, his passion, and that's fantastic. There's yeah. a lot of really good people down at Seaford. Yeah, definitely. Who have copped a lot of stick. Yeah. Um, and obviously, besides this Saturday and Monday, we've got to be getting the cup on Monday, uh, Matt. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we want oh, to get over right? yeah. oh, okay. But I besides that, I wish them luck. I think they're a great club too. Mm. I do know. too. Well, we're very good friends with Seaford. So we've got Seaford out on top on nine points. Enfield City on eight with that win, which was good for them. And the Cove and Northern Demons on seven. West Adelaide making up the top five on six. So still only one game away there, which is uh, good to keep in touch. Port Piri on six. NAB five. Playford four. Toros, Norlunga and Gawler all on one point. So, um, you know, you get a couple of wins on the board and it makes a huge difference, absolutely huge. It does, and plus you must remember it's a longer season in the State League. Yeah. So, and there's a couple of teams that have got catch-up games. Yeah, you've got, what, so 20, 21 rounds or something, 22 rounds? Uh, yeah, 20 games. Yeah, or oh, 20, so, okay. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at the games that you've got for this next round, which is round five, the Easter Long Weekend. And uh, <clears throat> there is a big match there, and it's going to be against um, two teams that uh, got quite a few goals for, which we're going to have a look at. Norlanga United are taking on Northern Demons at home. NAB are taking on the Cove, so that will be a very good match. Playford City, uh, with that good win, are taking on Port Pirie City. Enfield, in the night game, are taking on Gawler. And West Adelaide and Seaford. Now, I'm looking at... This is going to be at uh, City Massa over which... I filmed a game a couple of weeks ago there, your Enfield game. Yes. Beautiful amenities for oh, filming. Absolutely. The pitch was marvellous. Fantastic. Like carpet. So congratulations on being able and, to secure that. Thanks for jinxing us. <laughs> I don't jinx teams. No, don't. Never at all. Um, oh, don't tell me about who jinxed your team. And I did speak about that last week. But anyway, got to keep his temper under control. Yes. Um, lovely oval. So congratulations on the club for getting that uh, uh, um oval in that venue because it's, it is great for clubs to be able to play on such a good uh, surface. It is. Yeah. Uh, look, I mean, this is a, bit, a bugbear of mine, is uh, facilities in the inner western suburbs mm -hmm. or the western suburbs in general. Um, and I put on my, my genius hat mm -hmm. where, you know, we keep lobbying the Adelaide City Council and, um, and uh, inner west councils and the government for, for more room, right? We've really run out of room for juniors yeah. and unfortunately we have to turn kids away. Yeah. Uh, and it's sad that in a, a, a country as rich as Australia, in a city like Adelaide, that we just haven't got enough sporting fields for soccer, mm. right, for our kids. And, and that's something that uh, really needs, needs to be looked at. Uh, Most definitely. Look, in, that's a common occurrence, not only in uh, uh, men's, boys, but women's as well. Um, absolutely. So it is something that seriously has to be looked at. I just wanted to touch on that game again. West Adelaide, uh, Seaford. Now, but you two teams are the only ones that 